ओम श्री साई राम वेलकम टू प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम वन ऑफ द क्वालिटीज ऑफ डिवाइन इंकारनेशन इज करुणा करुणा मीनिंग कंपैशन काइंडनेस एम्पथी दर supremely compassionate and respond to a devotee's call shower compassion on him and grant him bliss the present such avatar is himself the source of all compassion and his devotees have always experienced his grace well a story from chennai which tells us how compassionate swami is a few years ago a manufacturing unit at chennai signed a contract with a korean firm to manufacture and supply railway wagons the wagons had to be delivered in a stipulated time frame but the non cooperation of the factory workers resulted in a delay as the last day for the stipulated time frame neared a korean officer arrived in chennai and booked a cargo ship to carry the consignment but the wagons were not ready since it was not going to be possible to execute the contract on time the executive in charge was very worried he was an ardent sai devotee so he started praying to swami fervently the stress caused him to fall ill but somehow he managed to write a letter to bhagwan baba praying to him for his compassion and gave the letter to a subordinate officer to personally give it to baba at the time swami was staying in a bungalow at anantapur when the officer reached there with the letter in hand he saw swami coming out of the main door baba was walking through the crowd and blessing the devotees as he walked on he kept tying knots in the handkerchief in his hand swami came near the officer and on seeing the letter in his hand said why are you worried the ship will reach only when the wagons are ready and all their problems will be solved as he was saying this he pulled two corners of the knotted handkerchief and all the knots opened up for a few moments he looked at the sky moved his finger as if writing something in the air and walked away at that very moment a storm appeared in the sea and the ship was unable to reach chennai as per the schedule the ship was also damaged in the storm and it needed repairs to stop it all when it finally arrived near the port due to heavy traffic there is a further delay of four days before it could be anchored at port in this manner the ship reached chennai after a delay of one month by this time the wagons were ready only swami's compassion had saved the devotee from disgrace the other incident is about Shrimati Sardamma. One Swami said to her, "I am going to get you married to Karunya Nanda." Both are old people, crossed the seventies or even eighty. <laughs> All those who were present there laughed. Sardamma was old, and Karunya Nanda was an aged sannyasi. But when pondered deeply over Swami's statement, she realized. the inner significance 
he meant to tell her i am an ocean of karuna compassion i want you to merge in me that is the inner meaning that she could know well to redeem a devotee from sin is to liberate him from suffering due to past karma only incarnations have the power to make this possible while describing bhagwan said darshanam papanashanam just by his darshan alone the devotees get absorbed of their sins bhagwan baba's darshan inspires the devotees to shed their bad qualities and experience god's presence in their purified hearts well they thereby get liberated from their suffering due to past karmas a story from the life of shirdi sai a young man named ishwar lal came for saina darshan from mumbai at the time ramanavami was festival was being celebrated he participated in it and served saina according to his capacity all of a sudden he contracted cholera and got bedridden he was staying at the house of a lady named radha krishna mai the lady never came for saina darshan nor did she ever visit the dwarka mai but she had attained such oneness with sainad that whatever he spoke in the dwarka mai she could know and understand it while sitting in her house when ishwar lal started gasping for breath radha krishna mai realized that his end was drawing near she asked him have you performed any good deeds to earn merit he barely managed to say no and passed away at this saina said he has secured a good place in the other realm although he did not perform any meritorious deeds throughout his life he offered his seva at saina's feet during his last few days so the compassionate saina granted him the reward by absolving him of his sins papanashanam and granted liberation long ago at putavarti a woman once offered poisoned vadas a type of snack to bhagwan very lovingly swami ate the vadas although he knew they were poisoned the woman followed him to see the effects baba pressed his stomach and the vadas came out of his mouth whole as they were served to him on seeing this the woman repented and fell at swami's feet with an open heart swami forgave her and inspired her to tread the path of devotion he absolved her of her sins and granted salvation so we naturally come across such incidents of his infinite compassion shri shyam jwale j u w a l e is the name of one among the countless devotees of swami on may 27 1963 for the first time he visited white field and was blessed triple fold with darshan padas parshan and sambhasan after this on many occasions he visited putaparthi and white field for swami's darshan every time swami talked to him gave him guidance and granted many interviews with swami blessings mr juwale started the first study circle in maharashtra in his life journey 
many a time he underwent physical suffering but he completely surrendered his life's care to swami and remained unfazed in a short time after he became a sai devotee sham bahu suffered from eczema a skin disease on his leg he consulted a doctor in mumbai and started treatment but instead of getting cured the exe- the eczema started spreading it came to a point that he was unable to even walk properly during that period he earned for swami's darshan and went to puttaparthi along with his family in those days it was not possible to know about swami's whereabouts from long distance or via telephone so when juwale family reached puttaparthi and found that swami was not there mrs juwale could not control her tears on the next day some devotees informed them about a spring of water nearby the water from the spring collected in a pool and a basin was built around it it was known to be holy water and it cured many diseases mrs juwale insisted that they visit the spot so the family reached there the water basin was surrounded by beautiful idols and there was an enchanting garden of tulsi plants around a lot of people were partaking the holy water some were collecting it in bottles yet the level of water remained constant mrs juwale drank some of it applied some on his leg and they turned to the ashram two days passed but no effect could be seen on the affected leg maybe this was because swami's grace had to directly fall upon his devotees to further strengthen and confirm his faith on the third day suddenly swami returned and all the activities were resumed the very next day the family were called for an interview on entering the room they were blessed with padra namaskar swami mitrilaj vibhuti turned to mr juwale and said you are suffering from eczema on your leg isn't it the portion of the leg that had contracted the disease was not visible as it was covered by the trousers but can anything remain hidden from our beloved swami <laughs> swami continue don't worry for 7 days apply ganji on it ganji is the liquid that gets collected or boiled rice shyam bahu was confused he did not know what ganji meant the amnishan swami answered the excess water that we throw out while cooking rice is ganji and while saying so swami also enacted it with his hands the family reached mumbai with swami's blessings as per his instruction shyam bahu applied the ganji water on the infected area for 7 days on the 8th day there was no trace of the disease the eczema had disappeared not even a spot or a mark could be seen and the leg was fine as before well the second incident is also from juwale's life a few years later mr juwale realized that some cysts c y s t s had developed behind his ear soon they began to grow in size and number he did not suffer from any ear ache but he felt some heaviness if any part of the body develops any growth a person's mind gets burdened with worry miss juwale was no exception 
So he consulted a doctor who suggested that he should show it to an ENT surgeon. Accordingly, Shambhav met a well-known ENT specialist in Mumbai. Shambhav, here went Brother Sham. Yes, get some tests done for all the cysts. On seeing the reports, the doctor said, surgery is the only remedy. If not, in, if not immediately, you must get it done in a month's time. Otherwise, the cysts will go on increasing. Prior to the doctor's visit, Mr. Juwale had booked railway tickets to Puttaparthi. So he decided to undergo surgery only on the return from Puttaparthi. Within two days after reaching there, Swami called them for an interview. He inquired after the family. He also asked, how is study circle? In what way you are conducting it? Swami seemed pleased with his answers. Suddenly, as he was talking, he materialized Vibhuti. In order to receive it, Ms. Juwale stretched his palm, but Swami ignored it, walked two steps forward, rubbed it behind Shambhu's, Shambhu's ears with his own hands. It is only then Ms. Juwale remembered about the cess. He had only forgotten about it completely. Swami patted him on his back and asked him to return home. When Shambhav returned to Mumbai, he realized there was, there was no sign of the cysts at all. Yet he wanted to be sure, so he went to see the specialist. The doctor too could not see the cyst. Once again, all the tests were done. On seeing the reports, the doctor said, maybe the earlier reports were wrong. How could the doctor have known that the report was not incorrect, but that the patient had been healed by the doctor of doctors, the supreme healer, Dhanvantari, who had made the cyst disappear in a moment. Thousands of devotees from all over the world have experienced this phenomena, where they have been healed mentally and physically just by Swami's divine will. What a miraculous thing it is. God's heart is softer than butter. It melts at the devotee's suffering and His grace starts flowing abundantly. Only His grace can relieve the devotees of His agony. Many a time, in order to free Him, God has taken on his devotee's suffering upon his own physical body, the body which has assumed for the sake of the devotees. Here is a story from Sai Shirdi incarnation. There was a devotee of Sai Maharaj by the name Dada Sahib Kaparde, K H A P A R D E, Dada Sahib Kaparde. In January 1912, while he and his wife were residing at Shirdi, all of a sudden his son suffered from high fever. It was so high that the boy started struggling, struggling, writhing in agony. So the, the mother's mind became restless. One evening when Sainath set out on his Evening round, the boy's mother, Mrs. Lakshmi Kaparde, ran to Sainad and fell at his feet. Wailing aloud, she narrated everything to Sai. In this difficult situation, Sainad comforted her, saying, Think that the sky is overcast. There will be a cloud burst and the sky will be cleared as before. When such is the case, why be afraid? Saying so, he lifted his robe and after showing everyone present there the odorous glance 
as large as hen's eggs that had erupted all over his body. All over his body. And he said, see, this is how I have to take your suffering upon myself. On returning home, Lakshmi Bhai found out that her son's fever had abated. God removes not only physical but also mental suffering and ordains the devotees worldly as well as spiritual progress. A long time ago, Swami once had gone to Delhi to give darshan to his devotees there. A huge crowd gathered at the venue where Swami was to give darshan. Among them were many wealthy personalities too. The chauffeur of one of these persons was curious to know whose darshan is Saheb, the boss I mean, had gone far. So he parked the car and reached the venue. But the crowd was so large that he got Swami's darshan only from afar and it was not very clear. As he was looking at Swami, he started thinking about the mountain of physical sufferings and financial difficulties that he was overburdened with and thought. If I could got closer to this Baba, at least I would have been able to tell him about my difficulties. But he was destined to get darshan only from afar. So he had to return back without making a mention of his problems to Baba. A few years passed. Whatever problems the chaffer had, they dissolved on their own. The mountains of difficulties disappeared. After becoming free from worry and fear, he heard from somebody about Bhagavan Sri Satsai Baba and he reached Prashanti Nilayam along with his family. As he sat in darshan lines, Swami selected him for interview. During the interview, Baba said to him, We have met once earlier, long time ago. Your prayers reached me. On hearing this, he remembered the incident in Delhi, where he had got Swami's darshan from afar, and he had been disappointed because he was uh, unable to convey his problems to Swami. But from what Baba told him now, he was uh, convinced that Swami is God, because although at the time he did not even get a close darshan or a chance to talk to Swami, he knew about his suffering. Also, he had turned his gracious gaze at the chaffer and removed all his difficulties. God alone is closest to us because he is the indweller in everyone's heart. A devotee's earnest plea melts his heart and he takes care of every detail in the devotee's life. Sairam, we meet next.